Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. We exalt the Lord on today. First, giving all praise to God, to our pastor, to all of God's people, to the people that are watching Facebook Live. Greetings from the Greater Love Missionary Baptist Church, where we love God and we love the people of God. Our scripture will be coming from Psalms chapter 34, verse 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear no other and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. The grass withered and the flower faded, but the word of our God shall remain the same. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come. As I'm a servant, bow as I'm as we know how. Thank you, O oh God, for allowing us to come into your house of worship just one more time. Oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you fall fresh in this place like never before, oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would have thine own way. Touch the greater love Baptist church, oh God. Touch our pastor. Oh God, touch him and his family, oh God. We pray and ask, oh God, that you would open up the floodgates of heaven and rain down a supernatural blessing upon his life that he won't have room enough to receive. Oh God, we come saying a special prayer for Deacon Cook right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we pray and ask, oh God, that you would touch him from the top of his head to the sole of his feet, oh God. And let us not forget about Deacon Aaron. Oh God, we pray and ask, oh God, that you would move in a special way. It's tithes and offering time. Praise the Lord, it's offering time. All right.
Oh, Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus. Right now, we ask you to bless this tithes and offering, Heavenly Father. Let it be used so on your kingdom here on earth, Lord, as it is in heaven. We thank you. Bless the one who gave, who had to give from their heart. We bless the one who had desired to give but didn't have it, Lord. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, that you will bless greater love, Lord, right and everyone, every member in their family, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Testing, testing. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Let's give God a hand clap. He deserves the glory. He's already got the honor. Yes, Lord. Anybody know that God's been good? Hallelujah. Can I get just one witness that God has been good? All the time, amen. We've got Miss Brianna Jean coming for to. No, 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 no. 
together for the good of them who love the Lord and called according to his purpose. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You reign, Lord. How many of us know that we're in a battle today? We're definitely in a war. But the best thing about it is, just like in school when you had your school books, you can look at the back of the book and you know the answers. That's what the basic instructions before leaving earth is all about. You can look to Revelation and see that John said that we overcame the devil by the words of our testimony and by the precious blood of the Lamb. His name is Jesus Christ. So we win. If you know that we win today and that we're victorious and that we're going to win this war, look at your neighbor and say, we win. This means war.
kind of cut me off there this morning there. I plead, I plead the blood. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Oh, okay. She wanna make it. Come on, Bree. Come on, Bree. <laughs> Miss Bree gonna make her announcement. Good morning, Greater Love. Giving praises to God. Thank you so much for allowing me a moment. I'm sorry I'm out of order just to say to you, uh, thank you um, very much for uh, all the kindness about, um, as I've been passing out Save the Dates and wedding invitations. I am getting married on September 12th. And uh, I, thank you. Praise, praise God. Our congregation is, um, is all invited. Um, I have these invitations and um, I'm sorry I've been absent but my fiance had code a few weeks ago and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have it and bring it here um, so uh, they're a little belated to get into your hands but I just want to let you know that I'm gonna put these here on the side of the stage if you haven't gotten a chance to take one already they're for you um, I'm gonna spray them off with some sanitizer and uh, uh, they're for you to take home. They have some RSVPs, and I know it's getting a little close. If you'd like to text me or um, send me an email or Facebook or do it that way, that's fine. Um, we would just love to know who's coming so we can make sure we have plenty of barbecue to feed everybody and um, space for you to sit in and distance in case you'd like to. We'll have masks and all that. So um, lots of love, and, and, and God bless you, and thank you so much. Amen. Thank you, Bree. Been such a loving young lady here at the church. Amen. Amen. Such an obedient child. I believe greater love will show up at that wedding that you are about to have. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Willard, for your obedience to the Lord. Thank you for that, sir. We appreciate that. Let us pray. Father, we come now. We come in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for things being as well as it is. Could have been worse, God, but we thank you. Even in the midst of COVID-19, we thank you, God, that we are still able to assemble ourselves together. I thank you for that, God that we didn't allow the spirit of fear to separate us from the service. So God, we thank you because we know that you're all powerful and that you got everything under control and everything is in your hands and we thank you. Now God, we put the service in your hands because we know that you know what to do with it. Teach us God in this hour. Teach us what to say and how to say it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Listen, if you have your Bibles, I want to go to Acts chapter 19. In Acts chapter 19, I want to read in your hearings verse 11 through 17. Acts chapter 19 beginning at verse 11. Beginning at, yes, thank you, preacher. Beginning at verse 11 in Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 11. Uh, if you're not there yet, catch me. Uh, in Acts chapter 19, beginning at verse 11, the Bible says, God was performing extraordinary miracles by Paul's hand, so that even faith cloths, aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirits came out of them. Now some of the entrant Jewish uh, exodus also attempted to pr pronounce the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying 
I command you by Jesus that Paul preaches, mm -hmm, seven sons of Scava, a Jewish high priest, were doing this. The evil spirit answered them. Look what he said. I know Jesus, and I recognize Paul, but who are you? Well, well, well. Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them, overpowered them all, and prevailed against them, so that they ran out of that house naked and wounded. When this became known to everyone, who lived in Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, they, 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 they became afraid and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high esteem. I, I want to talk to you for a few minutes on a subject, things we can learn from the seven sons of Scava. Things we can learn. I, I didn't say things you can learn, I said things we can learn because if I say you, that mean I'm excluding myself. And so what I'm saying this morning is, is things that we can learn, all of us, ah, from the seven sons of Scava. This story should act as a warning to those who think, watch me here, if they can do, mm-hmm, something I can do it too well, watch me but that's not so stay with me unless God calls and equips you to do it the chances are that you will fall flat on your face watch me because God doesn't empower you to do your own thing help me here he empowers you to do his thing. That's right. Talk back to me if you can. He, he doesn't empower you to do your own thing. He empowers you to do your thing. So never think that you, you can be a copycat of somebody. I don't hear nobody talking. It ain't no need of me thinking I can jump on that, on that keyboard or those keyboards and think that I can play if I hadn't been trained in playing it. It don't need me think I could get on the drum and beat the drum like Daryl if I wasn't trained to do it. You got to be trained to do that. And so don't never think that because somebody else can do it, you can do it too. And especially in the spiritual realm. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. I said especially in the spiritual realm. In the spiritual realm, you can't do what other folks do. Come on, you, you think that some because somebody else do it, I can jump right in and do it. I'm going to show you in the scripture that in the spiritual realm, you sure can't do it. Now watch this now, watch this. Unless God calls and equip you to do it, I said it, the chances are you're going to fall flat on your face. Now watch this. The truth is, you can only use the name of Jesus effectively. I'm talking about effectively now. I'm not talking about you just using his name. But you can only use his name effectively when you acknowledge him uh, as your Savior and your Lord. Meaning you got to be saved. To, come on, talk back to me. You got to be saved to use the name of Jesus effectively. Watch this. And then... You can't use it effectively when you have when you have an intimate relationship with him. You see, when you have an intimate relationship with the Lord Jesus, you can use his name effectively. And when you stand on his word and practice his principle in your everyday life, when you do that, every time you use the name of Jesus, you're protected uh, by the authority that's in his name. Anybody know that there's some authority in the name of Jesus? I can't get no help in here. Believers, if you're a believer here today, when you use the name of Jesus, you got some authority. And you need to understand that you got the authority under the name of Jesus. You got the authority to cast out demons. 
You got the authority to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You got the authority as a believer. And I want to pop that and go home on that because you got to understand the authority that you have. You're just not saved to be saved. You got the power on the inside of you. Look at your neighbor and say, I got power. Stand at you. You, you, you got to know you got the power. You, you ain't got to be no wimp. Come on, come on, talk back to me. I don't have to be no wimp. I ain't got no time to be no wimp because I understand that I got the power. Ain't nobody talking back to me. If my kids is acting the fool, I got the power to go down on my knees and call out all of those spirits. And do you understand God will move on your behalf? Yeah. Watch this now. I'm talking about things we can learn. We can learn from these brothers. Watch this now. The first thing I want to tell you you can learn from them is that Satan knows who you are. Watch me. The demons in this man spoke to the sons of Scarva saying, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Mm -hmm. Come on the question is, do you have the kind of relationship with God that causes Satan to know your name and acknowledge that you are a force to be reckoned with? When God watched this act, Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? Guess what he replied? If you turn to Job chapter 1, verse 8 through 12, and you can read that later. I'm going to paraphrase it. He says, listen, maybe, listen, this is what he said. Yes. When he asked Job that. Yes, Jesus said. And every, that's what the devil, every time I come up against him, that's what the devil said. I hit a force field and I can't penetrate. See, every time he came up against Job, he hit a force field and he could not penetrate Job's life because Job had an authentic relationship with the Lord. Jo 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 Job, so do you remember Job's wife? Cursed God and died. Job called her a fool. You ain't saying nothing. Can you, can you go through what Job went through and continue to have your great relationship with the Lord? If they take your children, they take your land, they take all of that stuff. Can you still serve the Lord and lift up your hands and say hallelujah? You got to have an authentic relationship with the Lord. Do he know you? You got to know it. Watch this now. God have mercy. You, 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 you. And, and listen, and it's not the enemies who is afraid. Watch this. Watch this now. Watch me now. It's not you. The enemy is afraid of. It ain't you. But watch this. It's God's spirit within you. The enemy ain't afraid of you, but he's afraid of the Holy Ghost that's on the inside of you. When you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, the enemy is afraid of you if you walk in the world. Oh, God help me, Jesus. You got to walk in the word. <laughs> you, you, you watch me, <laughs> watch me here because because there's gonna come a day, and the day is now. <laughs> watch this. The day is now when the evil day comes. That, that evil day is now. When the evil day comes, you discover if you have what it takes. The evil days is right here amongst us right now. And the devil, you ain't saying that, been teaching on him every Monday night. The devil will try you to see if what you are saying you're going to live. Because a lot of us, we quote things, but we don't want to live things. I can't get no help up in here. You quote scripture, but you don't want to live scripture. Can I get a witness right there? You can say a whole lot of things, but you better know in the last days we are living in, you're going to be challenged by the devil. Now watch this now. The Bible 
Bible says in Ephesians 6 and 13, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We in the evil days. So you got to pick up the whole arm of God. You can't play with God no more. You can't be tripling and tripping. You got to give God everything he owns and everything he got. That means you got to give your life to the Lord and give him everything. No, watch this thing. God have mercy. The demons in the man recognize the weakness in the seven sons of Scarborough and script them of their pretense. Mm -hmm. You will only survive if your faith is genuine. Come on, tell your neighbor, I got some genuine faith. I, I'm believing God. <laughs> I ain't letting no devil trip me up. I ain't getting into all that foolishness because I believe God. <laughs> because one day, watch me here, You'll have to walk with God when you can't understand or explain where he's taking you. And I have a witness right there. You've got to walk with God when you don't even understand where he's taking you. But you know he's taking you somewhere. And the somewhere that he's taking you, if you know he's taking you, you've got to know that everything is going to be all right. Lord help me. Listen, your techniques and your talent won't get you through. You're going to have to stand on the word when it doesn't look like it's working for you. Anybody in here ever prayed to God and it seemed like he ain't coming through? Ain't nobody talking back to me. You praying to God and it seemed like God, I prayed to you. I'm giving tithes. I'm giving offering. I'm at the church on Sunday morning. I prayed and it ain't coming through. But can I tell you, the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Y'all ain't saying that. Wait on the Lord and he will renew your strength. One day you're going to mount up with wings and fly. You're going to fly like an eagle. Anybody in here ever waited on God? And God finally came through for you. You thought he was not going to come. But he came right through right on time. Can I get a witness here? Any, 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 any on time folks I got in the audience. That the Lord came through. When you discover it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Can I get a witness here? It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It ain't got nothing to do with you, but it's got all to do with the spirit of God that's on the inside of you. If you got the spirit of God in you, you ought to tell God thank you this morning. You ought to tell God thank you because I got power. I might not have known it before I came, but right now I understand. I got the power. Tell your name I got power. Watch this here now. I want to give you something else you can learn from the sons of Carver. Watch this. Those around you aren't necessarily with you. God help me, Jesus. God help me. I said those around you aren't necessarily with you. Just because somebody hang out with you, admires you, and tries to emulate you, it doesn't mean they're with you. Watch me here. These men fall at Paul, studying his every move and trying to do what he did. But they had the wrong motive. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. They had the wrong motive. They were never with him at all. Are you concerned about losing? Losing certain people? Can I get a witness here? Are you always trying to keep them happy? Do you wonder sometimes if they can make it in life without them, without you? What John writes in John 1 and 1 
John chapter 2 and verse 19. John says this. They went out from us, but they were not of us. So everybody that hangs around you, let me explain to you. These sons of Scala, they hung out with Paul. They studied Paul. Help me, Lord Jesus. They knew Paul's every move. And I'm going to show you in the scripture where they try to impact and emulate Paul. In other words, they tried to do what Paul did, but they had the wrong motive. Somebody hanging around you got the wrong motive. They're telling you you all right, lifting you up to the sky, but all the time, they are not with you. Can I tell you something right there? Be careful who you give your information out to. I feel Jesus right there. Be careful who you talk around. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Be careful who you say what ta ta to. Because they might what ta ta to the next person. And the next person what ta ta. And before you know it, all of your business is everywhere. And half of the business is a lie. Because if you tell somebody something, they're going to add to what they say to the next person. Can I get a witness? is up in here. They're going to add some things. I said they're going to add some things. You don't want them to ADD. Can I get a witness right there? Be careful who you tell your business to. Now watch this right here. Watch me here now. When God, I'm going to tell you something folks. When God removes a person who doesn't belong in your life, trust God. God have mercy. <laughs> when he removed that person, trust God. You know why? Because God knows what's best for you. When I look back in my life, God have mercy. When I look back in my life, when I saw the woman, the woman that I love, when I got out of the military, I thought I loved. Oh Lord, went through hell and high water, and Mama always taught me to do right, and I wanted to marry. Y'all ain't saying that. I really wanted to marry, and then. I had a real friend to come to me and say, Crow, that ain't the one. And that hurt my feelings. I said, what you mean that ain't the one? He said, bro, you don't know what's happening. You're in the military. Help me, Lord Jesus. You come to Austin and you go back to Fort Hood. So you don't know what's happening Monday through Friday. You're here every Friday, but you don't know what's happening. And I said, come on, tell me the truth, man. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let's tell me the truth. And when my friend got to telling me the truth, I said to myself, God, this ain't the one. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I said, this is not the one that I'm supposed to be married to. And then I cut the tune on that. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I know my wife ain't want me to say it, but I'm going to say it anyhow. And then I went to the park. Yeah, you can laugh because I'm going to say it. I went to the park. She hate when I say it, but I'm telling the truth. I went to the park one day. I was riding on my bicycle, Miss Betty. I didn't have no car. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I didn't have no car, but I had a bicycle. You know, ain't nobody talking. I said to myself, ain't too many women going to get on the steering wheel and let me ride them. But my wife got on the steering wheel, and I was able to ride her around. Y'all ain't saying nothing over there. And I said to God, maybe this is the right one. And he here it is 37 years later. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Here it is 37 years later. Now we ain't riding on the bicycle. You ain't saying nothing. <laughs> God will. Let me show you something. Great love what God will. I want you to learn from the seven sons of Scholar. And I'm glad. I'm so glad. God have mercy. I'm so glad that uh, me and my wife got that kind of relationship. <laughs> After so many years, you can say some things and they won't get mad. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Oh, God have mercy. I'm glad that I know her because I, 
Sometimes, most of the time, if I make her mad, she quiet. I ain't saying nothing. Just quiet. I ain't waiting a little while before she can explode. But most of the time, most of the time, I know when I say something, if she ain't quiet, I'm in good shape. Y'all you know say, <laughs> you know say, well, you've been married a long time, man. You kind of know each other. I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm happy for my wife. Y'all ain't saying that. I, I, I'm telling you, because we work like two peas in the park. Because sometimes I take out the trash and I come back in and I say, Lord, let me get a bag. She already got a bag in there. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. I mean, when you get to get the loving on each other, you work like two peas in the pot, and then you understand each other. You know what one like and what the y'all ain't saying nothing up in there. I'm trying to teach you something. Now watch this here. I want to share this. Well, watch this here. In the sons of Scarva, we understand that greater numbers don't always mean greater effectiveness. Ooh, God help us. I, I said greater numbers, because you know, we look at numbers now, you know, who you're seating, how much you're seating, dog. But can I tell you something? Greater numbers don't always mean greater effectiveness. Can I say something right there? Can I talk to the music folks right there too? Don't think that when you have a musical, you're worrying about numbers, but that ain't the effectiveness of it. Help me, Lord Jesus. You can have a lot of folks in numbers, but that's not effective. Effective. Watch this here. Watch this here. These seven men together couldn't do what one spirit empowered the apostle to do. Hmm? And remember, their father was a chief priest. Huh? So they knew how to have church. Help me, Lord Jesus. Can I get a witness here? I said they knew how to have church. They fulfilled the scripture having a form of godliness but denying the power. God have mercy. See, you can have a form of godliness but you can deny the power thereof. These boys' daddies was the chief priests. These boys' daddies had them in church. Y'all ain't saying nothing. These boys were church boys. These boys were ushers. These boys sung on the choir. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. These boys partake in the church, but they denied the power thereof. It was seven of them, and they could not. Ah, God help me, Jesus. It was seven of them, and God. God empowered one apostle, apostle to do what seven could not do. So you're not effective in numbers. Watch me here. Some of y'all think, mm, if I put on a program, I feel Jesus. And three people show up. Some of y'all get discouraged. And you be thinking about the ones you invited, they didn't come. They weren't supposed to be there. But you can take two or three. If y'all were gathered in his name, the power of God can fall down in the place and everybody there can get healed, set free, and delivered. But you're worried about a crowd. And in the crowd, a whole lot of them got spirits on them. Y'all ain't saying nothing there. A lot of them got spirits on them night and night crawled out to the pulpit. Y'all come and talk back to me. And somebody might could not get healed. You remember Jesus had to get alone by himself. Because some of them, <laughs> Lord have mercy, who was with with him wasn't really with him and so he had to get by himself who am i talking to right here today sometimes you gotta get out there by yourself quit trying to get the crowd go in your prayer closet and tell god all about it and then watch god work anybody in here ever seen god work i said anybody in here ever seen god work in the midst of all that you went through i said in the midst of all that you went through you sat back and you've seen God work. I want God do it. Now watch this. The last thing I want to tell you before I get out of here is, watch this here. Success isn't as easy as it looks. Ooh, God help me right. Watch this here. These seven boys, sons, they showed up. Watch me in them toward the end of Paul's career. 
They showed up at the end. Look at your neighbor and say they showed up at the end. Who God help us? They weren't there in the beginning. When he was humble on the Damascus road. You remember on the Damascus road, right? When they turned his name from Saul to Paul. He was humble on the Damascus road. Watch this. He trained for three and a half years in the Arabian desert. These guys were looking for shortcuts. Ooh, I feel like preaching right there. They were looking for shortcuts. Sometimes people come to your ministry and they're looking for shortcuts. Y'all ain't saying that. Huh? They're looking to try to take your place. Oh, call it have mercy. You done been working for all these years. You done cut off so many devils. You've been battling. I don't hear nobody talking. And then you get some joker who wasn't here with you in the beginning and trying to get a shortcut. Can I talk right here? And when I read this and I studied this, I said to myself, I had to do some repenting. Watch me here. I feel like preaching the real deal. I got to tell you all this. Now, Sister Carter and Pastor Carter was here for about 18 years. 18 years. 18. She had to take a lot of lickings like he had to take a lot of lickings. That's 18 years. So you think that I could have come in here year one and cut off what Pastor Carter did in 18 years? You kind of out of your mind. No, I had to sit down. I'm talking to some young preacher. You just started pastoring, and you think you can go move the furniture in one year. Sit down somewhere. You know them people been used to Pastor Carter? Come on out of here. Some of them still call me Pastor Carter. I ain't mine. He was a good man. But you can't tear down what somebody else has built up all of them years. You trying to take a shortcut, and shortcuts ain't going to do it, baby. You got to work for this. Do you understand what a leader go through? This ain't no tiptoe through the tulip. You got to go through hell and high water. You got to deal with all kind of attitudes. You got to deal with all kind of spirits, baby. You got to always be praying up in the Holy Ghost. Just because somebody wrote a book about success, it doesn't mean you could achieve it overnight. What took years of life experience on the part of the author? Watch this. It's not that God can't give you instant success. Ooh, it's not that God can't do that. But, but that you need time. You need training. And in some cases, you need a major overhaul to prepare you for what's coming. Because you don't know what's coming. But these boys, these seven sons, Lord have mercy. It shows us you can't be faking because the devil know your name. We're in the last days, y'all. You better understand that he's coming. He's on his bicycle and he's pedaling. He's going to come at you with all kind of stuff. Come on out of here. Some of y'all got assignments from God. Can I give you a word today? Don't let a devil in hell cut you off from your assignment that God gave you. I don't hear nobody talking. I ain't letting nobody cut me off from my assignment. I got assignment from God. And I'm going to do my assignment until he calls me home. I'm not letting nobody, don't matter what you say and how you say it. I'm going to hear from God. And I'm going to get this mic every Sunday. And I'm going to tell, tell you the gospel truth. Whether it hurt or not. I can't get no help right there. I said whether it hurt or not. Sometimes hurting do you good. Can I get a witness right here. Sometime when you get the truth, come on out of here. The Bible says the truth will set you free. So I ain't afraid to say it. I say it because God says it. And if you got to fight with anybody, you got to fight with the Holy Ghost. You got to fight with God. But listen, greater love, God wants us to learn some things. Learn some things from these brothers. You, 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 you ain't got to run around here now. Watch this here. 
You ain't got to run around here and let them see. And then you decide, I ain't. No. No. Amen. No. Because too many of us, watch me here. We in the critiquing business. Come on, pal. Trying to critique. But understand, don't let them run you. And understand from these boys, you got to have power. These boys were in church, but they denied the power. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. Nobody in here know how God is going to move on a Sunday morning. Yeah. When we go back in this building, you don't know how God is going to move on a Sunday morning. Yeah. And whatever God says and however he moves, don't come to me whispering in my ears, I'm a, we don't do that over here and all that foolishness. You better get away from that kind of foolishness. You got to obey God. And sometimes when God begin to move, you better get up out of the way. If you ain't got enough sense to get out of the way, I got enough sense to get up out of the way. You go right on ahead talking about we don't do that over here when God is moving. You ain't saying nothing. And sometimes I'm going to say this. Hey, Shonda. Listen, sometimes, watch me here. Watch me here. When God begins to move, I'm going off the script now. But when God begins to move in a, in a, in a sanctuary, it's all the power of the Holy Ghost. And whoever got this mic, if God tells him to come lay hands on you, and you mad at them, you miss your blessing. Yeah, right, right. If you tell, I don't want you doing that to me, but you miss your blessing. Yeah. Because they're tied up in the Holy Ghost. And that's what God is trying to do to them. And all they're doing is trying to partake something in you. And I know you coming out, I ain't want you, and I don't want that. You can don't want it all you want. But you miss God. Can I get a witness right there? God don't move like we want him to move. God move however he wants to move. He moved on this church to have have us outside. Yeah. Amen, amen. Amen. I mean, we outside. Yeah. But we ain't stopped. Yeah. We stopped for a minute. Can I say it? Yeah. And some of y'all, you're going to get your whooping. Yeah. Don't thank God done forgot. You're going to get your whooping. Because you was talking. You're going to get your whooping. Because you was talking. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. When are we going back in, Pastor? And I always say to myself, God, we're going back in when you get ready for us to go back in. And it took some time. You had to drive up here and look at the building. And you thinking everybody else having church. Well, that's true. And you, well, what are we going to do? When are we going to do it? And then God, listen, look what the Holy Spirit did. I didn't do it, but the Holy Spirit did. The Holy Spirit orchestrated these brothers to build this deck. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have nothing to do with this, but the Holy Spirit orchestrated them. Whoever told them and for it, it don't matter. It was the Holy Ghost that orchestrated it. And then when they orchestrated it, they did what God told them to do. And then here we are back having church. Ain't nobody talking. And for some, some of y'all who were in your mouth, yeah, I'm talking to your greater love. For some of y'all who said they didn't know what they was doing, now I didn't do it, but the devil, I mean God, the Holy Ghost shut your mouth. I didn't have to get mad and come arguing with you why you said the Holy Ghost shut your mouth. Now you out there giving God the glory from 9 to 10. Right. And guess what? From 9 to 10, we ought to be thankful. Amen. Listen, listen. Out of all the days we've been out here, the forecast say, Rosalind, yeah. hey, shut up. Yeah. Jokes up. Yeah. It's getting ready to rain. Yeah. Hmm? And some people call me and they say, Pastor, you need to forecast. It's getting ready to rain. I said, I don't care if it rain or not. If they give me a mic, I'm going to be out here preaching. Whether y'all come or not. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. Sometimes you got to go through the storm and the rain. See, you sing about it, but you ain't going to be about it. Ain't nobody talking. I would have been right out of here with the mic. I didn't need no music. Give me a mic and some speaker. I would have been preaching if I had to preach to them trees and anybody who walking by because I know that we're living in the last days and God has called us to do something, people of God. And that's to get ready. Yeah. Get ready because he's coming. Yes, he is. We got to get ready, y'all. We got to get our hearts right. 
our minds right. Because he's coming now. Now you can sit and fake and shake. But God is coming. It is my job to warn you. So let's learn. I hope you took some notes from the seven sons of Scalva. I hope you took some notes. You know, it was a song on my heart. And I never forgot it, Joseph. I sure had it in my spirit to sing this morning, boy. I've been practicing too, man. I practice by myself. You ain't saying nothing, Joe. I ain't calling nobody. I just practice by myself. Got in my car and I practiced. And I, I said, God, I want to sing this song. But I ain't going to sing it this morning, Joe. You can wind yourself up. I'm not going to sing it this morning. You know what God just said to me? Watch this now. No, that ain't, that ain't the spirit. <laughs> You're going to be all out of bounds and disobedient to your minister of music. You know why I say that? Because I need to practice with him. Because it might be some cracks in there that he need to correct. Ain't nobody saying that. So y'all, I'm teaching you right there because y'all, y'all don't like y'all, 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 y'all don't like authority. Y'all don't like authority, but he's an authority over this music department. Now I can mess him up if I get up there and sing. If he, but he ain't that type of guy. I could have messed him up. Man, I ain't get up there. I didn't practice with so and so, and then somebody he might have practiced with gonna sing the song. And I done came in and messed up everything. The person going to get mad. You're going to get mad. I don't care who you are. Because you're supposed to sing. So sometimes just be obedient. And that's what I'm going to do. Y'all come on sing. I hope for somebody. Come on. We open up the doors of the church and people who are not saved, they pray the sinner prayer with me. But if you are saved, you don't need to repeat after me. If you saved, you don't need to repeat the sinner prayer with me. But if you are saved, you're not saved, then you need to repeat the sinner prayer with me. So those who are looking in today and those who are present here today, if you are not saved, then you have opportunity today to give your life to Christ. So as I pray this in a prayer, will you please repeat out to me? If you believe in your heart what you're saying with your mouth, you will be saved today. Amen. So repeat out to me, Heavenly Father, I'm a sinner. I'm coming now, confessing my sins. I believe in my heart that Jesus is your son. He died on the cross for my sins. He was buried. He rose on the third day. He now in heaven interceding on my behalf. Jesus, I'm inviting you come live in my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior. Jesus, you promised me Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, take complete control over my life. Help me to faithfully follow Jesus Christ and do the will of the living God every day of my life. I'm saved. I've been washed in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for loving me enough to save my life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. As they say, will you come today? You can come in person today. Will you come?
this time, Pastor Grant. Amen. Right brief, right quickly. We know that Woman's Day is um, Woman's Day is next Sunday. Next Sunday morning. Uh, we know what the obligation is. Just try to do the best that you can. Uh, I'm going to do my little 25. Uh, maybe I might do 50. I might do 100. This will help the women. Uh, I'm going to do that. But um, that was my first announcement. The second announcement I have is uh, they already complete the plumbing work for the church. Amen. So that was phase one. That was phase one. And so uh, we're looking now to go into phase two. So, so phase two going to be right around the corner. So I just... I said that to prayfully ask you to pray with us uh, and just say God whenever whenever he you know whenever he says yes he says yes and uh, when we go back in we want to go back in with a praise on our lips come on you don't go back in worshiping the Lord you can't go back with the same old thing y'all we got to be I'm telling you it's going to be different now and I don't want some of y'all to be looking at me crazy it's just going to be a little different I'm on I made up in my mind the other day that uh, I'm going to give up some of my time. I'll be down there at the church and giving up some hours to come down here. And it'll be my time to, uh, like, one-on-one -on -one counseling if you need it. Uh, and then for me to get into the Word of God and do some studying. Now, I don't think that if you come and you see my car park, I'm going to open the door. So if I don't open the door, don't get mad at me. Cause I'm in there doing something. I got, I got. This is this is it. I, I believe this is it. This I believe. Now I'm not no. I believe this is it. So I got to do everything within my power to see that this church. Cause I got to. I got to give an account for you. You, you know. I got to give an account for all of y'all souls. I mean, I got to give an account for this. One day when I die, and I meet you, I got to give an account. And I, I don't take that lightly. And so. I wanted y'all to, to know that the phase one has already happened, y'all. We're getting ready to go into phase two, and then it'll be phase three. I believe we're going back in quickly. And so, uh, uh, Davis, come on, close us out, sir. We want to mention that man day going to be next month on the 19th, the third Sunday. Any man who is looking today at this broadcast, we need you to come and participate. You remember we had that call at the church where all the men came? We must have had about 50 or 60 men came down to the church. We need you guys to come out because we need to celebrate men day the right way with all the men of the church. Amen? Amen. But next Sunday, can I get a witness? It's going to be Women's Day. Can I say hallelujah? Women Day next Sunday. And that's a good thing. They ready to. They don't got organized. So, men, we got about three weeks to get it right. Amen. Will you stand? Let's be dismissed. somebody else but let us be used by you for your glory and not for our own personal motive Lord Lord let us realize Lord that you are still in control that everything gonna be all right we thank you Lord for your word we thank you for our pastor we thank you for every member at this church Lord bless them and bless their family keep us Lord watch over us Lord protect us Lord may the love of God the grace and mercy our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest rule on body each every one of us until we meet again. And the church did say, uh,